The NFL power rankings is a bit surprising for the Detroit Lions, and Amar Ra could also miss some time. Hello everyone, my name is Derek and welcome to Detroit Lions Syndicate. If this is not your first time here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel so that way you won't miss a single upload from me. You got to hit that notification bell as well. A lot of you guys are not notified. That's cool because I know I still pop up in that notification feed, but I'm just you're just not notified of the video, so that's cool. You know, I think I'm officially past the loss to Minnesota. Yesterday was a tough day watching Monday Night Football, but today, you know, I'm like, it's time to move on, and we have to do just that. The Detroit Lions have a ton of significant injuries to their team this week. And we go and we have to host the Seattle Seahawks, which is also coming off a two-game losing streak. Now, we have a one game. We are loss-win-loss, loss, and they are win-loss-loss. Loss. So I've already put a poll out of who the fan base thinks is going to win. Now, this fan base, this poll is very biased. This is a Detroit Lions channel, but it's not as biased as last week. A lot of people have the Seattle Seahawks winning the game. But we will talk about the final results on that poll when I make my prediction video later this week. The power rankings came out for week four, and I myself just pay attention to the NFL rankings. There are other media outlets that you know, do the power rankings, but I just like to pay attention to the NFL. I feel like it's their brand. Why not pay attention to them? But this right here was a surprise, and I think that it should really relax a lot of fans who are trending down that SOL train. From NFL.com, rank 16, Detroit Lions 1 and 2, previous rank number 16. Dan Campbell owned it, facing a 4th and 4 in Vikings territory with a chance to ice a huge road win by securing one more first down. The Lions coach shifted away from his aggressive strategy and sent out the kicker. One miss and a busted coverage later, and Minnesota had stolen. Not stolen, we gave it to him. And Minnesota had stolen a 28-24 win from Detroit. I regret that decision 100%, Campbell said. I really do. I hate it. I feel like I cost our team. I really do, man. The strange thing, Campbell repeatedly left his offense on the field in similar situations earlier on Sunday, converting first downs on four of six fourth down tries. The coach got cold feet at the wrong time. The Detroit Lions were utterly abysmal on third down. They were three for 16 and four for six on fourth downs. Austin Seibert came out later that he might have been injured before he took that kick. I'm not sure if he got injured during that kick or previously or even if he was injured before the game. But going, you had a chance to go five for seven on fourth downs. And one first down ices the game. The Minnesota Vikings have no timeouts. And that kick put us in a situation where two completions and they would have been in field goal range to tie the game. But that busted coverage, man, left K.J. Osborne wide open, and you all know what happened. So it does surprise me that the Detroit Lions, having lost, did not move. In other ways, we lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. We dropped down the spot. We beat the Washington Commanders. We move up 10 or 11, and we lose after blowing two double-digit leads, and we don't move. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Relax. We have a whole season to go. I know it's easy to go back into SOL mode, but we're not there yet. And I think we just got to relax. Let them come out, handle business against the Seattle Seahawks. We also play a Patriots team that will be facing Brian Hoyer. I like to call him Brian Horror or rookie Bailey Zappi. Now, I'm not saying that these are given wins, but not facing Mac Jones in his who went to the Pro Bowl in his rookie year. That is a big upside for the Detroit Lions. I think personally the hype around this week will be the Matt Patricia revenge game. I'm sure Dan Campbell will be asked about what it would be like to go face Matt Patricia, blah, blah, blah. So we shall see. But the Detroit Lions are in a good place. It's a lot of teams, a lot of good teams that are one and two. I've been thinking about doing this segment for a while where I bring in one comment that really stands out to me. But I want to start bringing in at least one comment per video that really stands out to me from the previous video. And we kind of discuss it just a little bit. This is the comment that I've chosen today. This comment comes from Jeff H. He said, I'm SOL because look at Jacksonville. They pitched a shutout and smashed the Chargers yesterday. And last year they had a lousy defense. Aaron Glenn sucks as a DC. Dan Campbell keeps mismanaging the clock like last year. That means he hasn't learned anything on clock management. I like Campbell, but he's not the coach to lead this team. Now, before you guys go and criticize this guy's comments, that's not the purpose of what 
bringing in that comment was. It was to talk about the SOL. And SOL has been said a lot in the last 48 hours, and I think we really have to calm down. There were a lot of good points in there. I disagree with the Aaron Glenn. I think he's working with – I think he's called a fantastic game the last three games in a row, bringing blitzes when need be. I think a lot of this you can put on Amani. A lot of this you can put on Dan Campbell. If Austin Cyber was injured, you cannot send him out there. You have to go for it. And I think Jared Goff has learned from this. He got to push coach a little harder. I think the team has as well. And I think the next time we'll see if Dan Campbell learned from his mistakes. He said something yesterday that if you fail and don't learn from it, that's where the problem comes in. Dan Campbell has been a super duper aggressive coach and he needs to maybe dial it back or make a little bit of better decisions. So we'll see what happens. But I hope you guys like this segment. I'm going to try to do this every day, especially if it relates to what we're talking about the next day. This video is running a tad longer than my usual videos, but I did introduce a new segment. You guys know how I feel about milking videos, and I'm not a fan of them. But today, we tried something new. So my videos may be a little bit longer, but we have yet to see. I'm on Ross St. Brown. We got some good news and we got some bad news. The good news is it is not a severe ankle injury, nothing like Mac Jones or anything like that. But the bad news is he could miss some time. This comes from Tom Pelissero's Twitter. Lions budding star wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown underwent tests Monday on the ankle injury he suffered at Minnesota. And the results were encouraging overall, per sources. They'll be cautious, but if St. Brown misses time, it shouldn't be anything long term. Well, that is fantastic news, and I'm excited that St. Brown is not going to miss too much time. But I think that they will be cautious with him, and that's when this depth is really going to come into play as far as both the running back and wide receiver. We've got Quintez Cephas, who I believe has seen no action thus far this year. You can correct me if I'm wrong there. When I watch the games, I'm all over the place. But Quintez Cephas, we got him. Khalif Raymond, we've seen him a couple of times in the game. He actually came in when St. Brown went out uh, initially. So good news, but bad news. Now, I think the Lions' next two opponents are beatable with the current roster that we have. And I think that if we can get by, get to the bye week, let these guys get healthy, then we come out of that bye week, week seven, fly to Dallas, and we could have St. Brown, Swift, and the first appearance of Jamison Williams, which will be fantastic. And I think when that happens, That'll be a whole nother offense. So because of how vital these two gentlemen are, St. Brown and DeAndre Swift, we are probably going to shelve them until after the bye week. It sucks, but that's why we have the people that we have. And we will see just how deep this roster goes. Last year, if we would have been in the same situation, we would have been hit. We didn't have the depth to back up anybody pretty much at the wide receiver group. So let me know in the comments below, how do you think the Lions will do with no St. Brown he could be out for some time. My name is Derek. This is Detroit Lions Syndicate on our way to 5,600 subscribers. I think we're just a few away, maybe 10 or so. So if this is not your first time here, consider doing that. Sorry for the longer video, but I'm going to give you longer content with no fluff. It's going to be substance in that content. So if you see longer videos, it's never for ads. It's always for substance. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself. And as always, go Lions.